In JavaScript, if, else, and while work exactly the same as they do in Pigeon, but there's a different syntax. For starters, the conditions are always written inside a pair of parentheses, and the bodies of statements are always written in pairs of curly braces. Also note that there's no reserved word elif, you just write else space if. So for instance, here we have an if else where the condition is is x equal to 3, and if so, we're going to call the function foo, otherwise we're going to call the function bar. And depending upon style, there are different ways you would put white space around the curly braces, but this is one popular style. Here's an example of a while loop. First we're declaring our counter variable i with the initial value 0, and then our while loop has the condition is i less than 5, and then inside the loop first we call the function foo, and then we increment i by 1. Now let's talk about the rules of variable scope, which are similar to pigeon, but a bit different. Imagine this is the entirety of our program. First we're declaring a global variable foo, and we're assigning a function to it. Inside that function, we're making reference to a variable named bar, but we don't declare inside the function any variable of that name, so the language assumes it's global. And then after the function, we're going to call foo, declare bar with the initial value 3, and then call foo again. The problem is that the first call to foo is going to raise an error, because at this point, the global variable bar doesn't exist yet, but the function attempts to use a global variable of that name. Our second call to foo, however, is just fine, because it comes after the creation of the global bar. So the lesson is that for global variables, we have to make sure they exist before we actually use them. In contrast, it doesn't matter where we declare our local variables, because in fact, declarations of local variables, unlike declarations of global variables, are not really actions. What happens when the interpreter reads the code of a function is it simply scans for declarations, and it doesn't care where it finds them. Because no matter where in a function a local variable is declared, it actually exists for the entirety of each call to the function. So here, for example, you can see that the declaration of the local variable bar comes, in fact, even after a return statement. So it couldn't possibly be an action because execution would never reach this statement. But in fact, the interpreter looks at this function and says, ah, yes, there is this declaration, so for the duration of this whole function, each time it's called, there is a local of that name. It just doesn't matter where in a function we declare our local variables. So in fact, many people prescribe a style where you just simply put all local variable declarations at the top of the function. Perhaps the biggest real difference between Pigeon and JavaScript is that in JavaScript we can nest functions, that is we can put functions inside other functions. Here for example we're creating a function which we're assigning to the global variable foo, but then inside the function we're creating another function which we are assigning to the local variable bar. Now before getting into why you might want to do this, declare a function within another, the most important thing to understand here is which variables belong to which function. The variables of the outer function I've highlighted in orange, and the variables of the inner function I've highlighted in red. So the outer function first has a parameter named a, and then it declares inside that function a local variable named bar, and then the inner function simply has a parameter named b. The rule is that a var statement declares a local variable for the function it is most immediately in. So the var statement here of var bar is inside the outer function, so it's declaring a local of that outer function. If we had a var statement in the curly braces of the inner function, that would be declaring a local of the inner function. So in any case, in this example, we're creating this function foo, and we call foo with the argument 5, 5 gets passed to a, and inside the function we have an interior function assigned to the local bar. Our return statement calls bar with the argument a, so we're calling that interior function with the argument 5. 5 gets passed to b, and inside that function we return b plus 3, so that's 5 plus 3, we, re we return 8, and so the outer function also returns 8. Let's consider a slightly more complicated arrangement. Let's say we have a function, denoted in orange here, that contains another function, denoted in red, which contains yet another function, denoted in green. 
And let's say that the outermost function, the orange function, has three local variables, a, b, and c. We don't care which ones are parameters and which one are just regular locals, it doesn't matter. And let's say that the red function has locals named a and d. And finally, the innermost function, the green function, has locals named b and e. First of all, notice that it's perfectly possible for an interior function to have its own local variable that has the same name as a local of some containing function. So the red function has a local variable of its own named a, even though the outer function also has a local variable named a. Despite sharing the same name, they're really totally separate variables. What the code example we just saw didn't illustrate is that an interior function can use the local variables of the functions which contain it. So the red function here can see and make use of the variables b and c from the function which contains it, the orange function, and our innermost function, the green function, sees the variables of both the red function and the orange function because it's contained by both. So it can see c from orange and a and d from red. Notice though that the red function doesn't see the variable a from the orange function because red has its own local variable named a. If this is a problem, if we really want to use that variable of the same name from the outer function, then we simply resolve the name conflict. We either rename a in the outer function or we rename it in the inner function. Similarly, our innermost function, the green function, has its own local variable named b, so it doesn't see b from the orange function. Also notice that in the green function, a refers to a of the red function, not a of the orange function, because the green function is most immediately contained by the red function, so it sees that one first. So to restate the rule here, an inner function can see all the variables of its outer functions unless there's a name conflict. So here's a slight modification of the code we were just looking at. Instead of the interior function having a parameter named b, it has a parameter named a, even though the outer function also has a parameter named a. It just doesn't really matter in this case. The local variable a of the interior function is just a totally separate variable from the local variable named a in the outer function, and that doesn't hinder us in this case. Now you should be very clear that when we say an interior function can use the variables of an outer function, we really mean it can use the variables, not just the values which those variables happen to have at the time the function is defined. So here in this example we have an outer function with a parameter a, and a local variable b and bar, and then we have an interior function with its own local parameter c. And this time the interior function is actually making use of the variables of the outer function. So let's say we call the outer function foo with the argument 3, 3 gets passed to a, and then the local bar is given the value 4, the interior function is assigned to bar, and then we modify b, we assign it the value 6, and finally we call bar, the interior function, with the argument 6. So 6 is passed to the parameter c, and a and b have the values that they still have in the outer function. a is 3, and b is 6. So 3 plus 6 plus 6 gets you 15. The interior function returns 15, and then the outer function returns that value, so it also returns 15. The key point here is that b in the interior function had the value 6, not 4, because b was actually changed in the outer function before we actually called the interior function. And the interior function is bound to the actual variable itself of the outer function, not just to the value which it happened to have at the time the function was defined.